you ever wonder why people talk about clouds and computers in the same breath? Or how your picks and games just appear on your devices? Well, we've got the scoop. Today, this course, if diving into the world of cloud computing, it's like digital magic that makes stuff happen on your gadgets. No need for tech wizardry here. We're breaking it down in a way that's super easy to understand, regardless of how familiar you are with technology. Join us on this adventure where we're going to unpack the secrets of cloud computing without getting all techy. By the end of this course, you'll totally get what's up with these virtual clouds and why they matter while leveling up your tech game. More and more companies these days are shifting their applications and business processes to the cloud. Let's start with a quick look at the history of cloud computing. Back in the 1960s, we had standalone mainframes, huge computers where everything happened. Imagine your computer today being like a keyboard and screen connected to the mainframe. It did all the work. They called these dumb terminals because they didn't do any processing. They were just extensions for the mainframe. Around the 1970s, there was some early virtualization on these mainframes, running a system within another system. Despite this, there was a shift in the 1980s towards a more client-server system. Smaller servers were introduced, and now we could store data on them and run programs on our own desktop computers. More dumb terminals. Our systems could do the processing. Moving into the 1990s, we entered the era of distributed computing. Applications ran across multiple servers for better performance and scalability. This coincided with the rise of the Internet, allowing us to access applications as services online. In the late 1990s, distributed customer relationship management software emerged as one of the early examples. Here, the application wasn't running in your environment. It was offered as a service over the Internet. This also brought server hardware virtualization over the Internet. Hardware virtualization is like having a special computer trick that lets one physical machine act like several, making it do different jobs at the same time without getting confused. We'll discuss this in more detail later in the course. This evolution led to what we now call cloud computing. While it's a relatively new term, it's similar to services we've been using for a long time. Think of your phone service. You don't build the infrastructure. You subscribe to the service that's already there. And with most subscriptions, you only pay for services when you need to use them, so it's a cost savings for companies, too. Cloud computing offers three main categories. Infrastructure as a Service, IAS, for accessing hardware. Imagine renting the tools and machines you need, like a virtual toolbox, without worrying about where they're stored or how they work. Platform as a Service, PAS, is used for software development. It's like getting a ready-to-use workshop with all the tools a builder needs. Developers can focus on creating without dealing with the nitty-gritty details. And finally, Software as a Service, SAAS, for subscribing to finished software. If you compare buying and maintaining software to a book, think of it as subscribing to your favorite magazine. You get the latest version without the hassle of owning and updating it. In essence, cloud computing lets us tap into the infrastructure of other organizations through subscriptions, saving us from the hassle of setting up and maintaining these services ourselves. Here are some other popular topics when discussing cloud computing. Cloud data center. Big organizations like Microsoft and Amazon have these super powerful places called data centers. They're like superhero headquarters for your computer stuff, strategically located and designed so that your online services can be reliable and work super well. Virtualization. Imagine your computer can be many computers at once. So instead of buying lots of computers, you only need one and it can run different things at the same time. It's like magic for computers to be more efficient and save money. Cloud Application Programming Interfaces, APIs. Think of APIs like friendly middlemen that help developers, the people who make apps, talk to the cloud. They use a specific system called REST, which is like a secret language only developers need to know. It makes building things on the cloud much easier. Cloud Storage. When developers create apps, they might need data stored in the cloud. Cloud storage lets them get to that data using a simple internet connection. It's like having a virtual file cabinet accessible from anywhere. Cloud database. For certain kinds of data, like customer info, the cloud uses databases. Unlike traditional databases, these ones are more flexible and can handle tons of information. It's like having a super organized spreadsheet that can grow as big as you need. In simple terms, the cloud is a powerful and flexible place where companies store and manage their digital stuff, making it easier for everyone to access and use it. Today, we've journeyed through the world of cloud computing together, and I hope you're as pumped as I am about the cool things happening up there. Here's a recap of some of the important topics we learned in this course. 
If you don't understand some of the topics here, please go back and watch that portion of the video. Remember, clouds aren't just for rainy days. In the tech world, they're like your virtual helpers making everything run smoothly. From sharing pics with friends to doing homework online, the cloud's got your back. Now, the next time someone asks you about cloud computing, you'll be the expert with the answers. Thanks for hanging out with us and leveling up your tech game. If you enjoyed the video or found it of value, please like and consider subscribing to our channel so we can continue to bring you great videos.